Is New World saved? That's the million dollar question right now. If you didn't know, the expansion for New World came out today, the Brimstone Sands, the new territory, and with it a bunch of other changes. On top of that, a bunch of changes have come out in the last six months where I haven't even played and covered them. But something I want to show you right now is a little bit more interesting than that. So, if I go to log in on my character, right now there is actually a queue for pretty much every server, I think. So, what they did was in the past, this is a whole thing. This is a whole thing, all right? So, they're, the way they've designed this game, if a server dies, there's not enough people, uh, either they merge the servers or hope that the people there pay for a transfer to another server and just kind of leave whoever's left to just rot, basically. So because of that, they've actually merged a bunch of servers in the past, like, nine months. And as the player base kept on dwindling, they kept on merging servers. And it kind of backfired now because suddenly... New World saved. People want to play it again. It was actually on the rise before this, but now with this coming out, there's there's no way. They've compressed all the servers, and if people actually come back, there's no way to actually separate those servers back out now. So it's kind of its own thing. So right now, my queue on Marama is 813. It is not really prime time. It's kind of prime time, but it's like 9 p.m. where I'm at. So it's like getting towards the end of prime time for a weekday. So let's take a look at some analytics together. Let's see, is New World safe? Let's see what the data has to say about that. So this is the Steam DB page for New World. It shows how many players are online at any time, that type of information. And you can see what's going on with the Brimstone Sands. Pretty interesting, 65,000 players online. But what's also really interesting, if you haven't been keeping up with New World, is if you go down here and look at the last six months, or even last three months of concurrent players on New World, and you'll see that it was actually trending this way for quite some time now, since the beginning of September. I think once Brimstone Sands was even announced, I guess people came back then. There was also the addition of the whatever music buff trade skill. In case you didn't know, they added a trade skill where you literally play Guitar Hero, basically, and it gives significant buffs to people around you and things, so that's a whole thing. Uh, but people have actually been returning to the game uh, outside of this. It seems to have fallen in the last week just before the, the launch, though. But with launch, we're at 65,000. So that's pretty huge. 65,000 players is a lot of players from MMO. That's actually moving back up now. So that's, that's interesting. All right, so let's take a look at the New World server status page. This one's always really interesting. All right, so let's see the situation, guys. All right, let's go look at the most popular servers right now. And wow, three hour queue time. This claims eight hour queue time, but I, I feel like that's not accurate. They're both the same number, but uh, queues of 2000 on some of these popular servers, US East, uh, South America East, and then US, so US East right now. I saw a screenshot from a friend earlier today. It was the same situation during EU prime time. So I think he sent me a screenshot like six hours ago or whatever it was. And same situation. So, um, I don't know how to say it other than they, they messed up. Because if the game ever is saved, which it kind of feels like it is in this moment, how are people supposed to play the game? Like, I guess you can transfer out, but you're gonna have to pay for a transfer because they merged, sir, like... Classic New World, it's always a mess, right? Always a mess, just how it's gonna be. But uh, that's the situation with what's going on. So New World's back, apparently, to some degree. Uh, it's popping off hard right now, and we'll see how it goes in the next few weeks, months, and next year even. Um, but yeah, I, there's a certain point a lot of us thought this wasn't even gonna be possible I remember back in like May seeing the player count down to 20,000 and stuff and being like Is it ever gonna stop falling or is it really just gonna die and um, for the sake of 
Amazon Game Studios, I'm, I'm happy for them to see that they are turning the ship around and having success. But uh, there are some fundamental issues that uh, need to be figured out. So, first off, um, this game so badly needs cross-server or something, right? Uh, it needs, like, cross-server PvP and or some type of cross-server PvE someday to prevent this scenario like we see down here of these servers. Now, if you're on one of these especially, but even all the way up to, like, here, um, yeah, your life kind of just sucks then. It just totally sucks. It's basically a single-player game at that point. And this is, like, the classic New World problem. And it's been a year, and it still hasn't really been addressed. I think the only addressing it is you can buy server transfers now, so you can get out of that if you want to spend money, which is, like, okay. But there really just needs to be something people can do on a dead server and still have fun. I always say add wars as a game mode. That's cross-server, so I can just queue up with the boys and we can go and play uh, Everfall, Siege, 50-on-50, 50 50 just for fun. Or just something that you could do that, you know, would be fun, even on a dead server, because cross-server something. I also would say cross-server PvP ranked arena, or ranked this, or dungeons, you know, whatever. Um, but, yeah, anyway, back to topic, the, the actual topic. So, Brimstone Sands came out. Uh, new professions came out, and here's the release notes, at least for this month's patch, which is which is not when the trade skill came out. That came out, like, I think a month or two ago. Um, so, the Brimstone Sands um, release. All right, let's take a look at this. So, they say that the Brimstone Sands is roughly the size of 2.5 Everfalls, which I've seen it myself. I logged on earlier. I'm, I can't really show right now because I'm going to be in queue for, like, an hour or more. Um, but, yeah, so I don't, I'm not really going to read too much about the lore and nitty-gritty, but it's sandy it's egyptian feeling uh it's got a lot of parkour randomly on buildings and things which was neat i saw that on streams uh giant sandworm stuff i don't, I don't want to spoil too much for you but it's it's pretty cool it's like the next level zone there's a whole main story quest that you have to finish the first main story quest and it continues on into the brimstone sands um so they claim to in this big revamping for this release optimized quest flow New quest dynamics, streamlined story, zone upgrades. I'm just going to kind of, you know, top level this. I'm not going to go too much detail. Uh, there's a Halloween event, the Night Veil vale Hollow. Hollow. Uh, they added a great sword weapon. If you haven't been following New World, there's now a great sword. Uh, they added heart gem abilities, which, um, if I remember right, this is kind of like a trinket from WoW, is what I thought this was. I, don't quote me on that, because I, th I only saw it once on someone's live stream. I haven't really been too deep into this. Um, but there's like an, another slot and it's a heart gem Correct me if I'm wrong on that uh, But something like that there's all the new stuff that you can put on that and have stuff so like Turn yourself to stone become immune to staggers knock down stuns and root slow. I'm not sure how long that would last Put your hand to the ground to unleash vines around you and root all nearby enemies So I mean some neat stuff which I actually think that sounds pretty darn cool like for PvP That's cool. It could be definitely annoying in wars when 50 people have them uh, but in, even in PvE, like doing a dungeon, assuming these apply to en enemies in a dungeon, I have a feeling they won't apply to a boss. I have a feeling you can't root a boss, but still pretty cool dynamic to add. Um, then we just get a bunch of world experience things. I guess I'll read the first one because they put it at the top. Uh, reduced hardy buff for 50%, 25%. So just small things. I don't know, actually, I'm not even going to read it because I see it's just like nitty gritty stuff. Um, ooh. Quality of life, town projects, XP rewards reduced by 75%. That doesn't sound like a quality of life to me at all. That sounds like, that sounds awful. Uh, but let's see if they made up for it. So, faction missions rewards increased by a lot. Uh, lore notes increased, XP increased, gathering XP increased. Not gathering XP, but the X, like character XP gained from gathering. Uh, discovering POIs. Gathering trade skills, XP rewards increased. Corrupted portal XP increased by 150%. Uh, character leveling greatly reduced character XP required after level 20. 140% reduction through level 45. And 160% reduction through level 60. Which is a good change. Uh, if you guys played on launch, you might be familiar with a certain conundrum that New World had. Where... The game was meant to be a, a PvP game, but they ended up making it PvE as well. But that was a decision last second, and they only had like one year to work on it. 
And because of that, it created this scenario where they ended up front-loading the PvE experience. And so, like, the first 20, 30 levels had been tested through and through and were great. And you go through those first 20, 30 levels, and it was just like, damn, this game is so much fun. And then you hit this point level 30 where it was like, wow, suddenly it, leveling takes an eternity and nothing's good for leveling except for doing job boards, which I had fun doing because I like making money in the, in the trading post or whatever, auction house equivalent. Uh, but not everyone else has that same knack for that type of thing, so it wasn't very fun. Uh, so your life turned into mining stone and going to the, the trading post and cutting down trees. and they, Not trading post, mining stone, going to the job board, turning it in, going to cutting down trees. Going That was basically the player experience all the way from 30 all the way to 60. And it would take like, you know, 50 hours or 40 hours. And that's, that's where the majority of players burn out and quit. Out of the million like concurrent players on launch, the vast majority of those quit before even hitting 60 because of that like it wasn't fun to level and i don't know that this will even make it fun to level although there's other things they've changed that would make it fun to level but uh at least it won't be a, just a slog to get through that like so that's smart uh i would have preferred to see them leave projects you know similar instead of trying to eliminate them as a thing i, I don't know like why not just have all like that's kind of weird to me but okay now you have to actually like i don't know it's, it's okay I'm down, though. Um, and then just notable fixes or just fixed issues. Fixed issues. I don't know how these are notable. Um, uh, I don't know. Little bugs. Like music wouldn't start. Whatever. Um, they added a new expedition. Uh, they changed some things with the other expeditions. Just fixed bugs and things. Maybe some minor things. I'm not really going to go into the weeds on that. I'm, I'll link this, by the way. I should have said this when I started. This part right here is... Um, I'll have a link to this in the description of this video below the first paragraph if you want to read it. So, World AI, they've done things. Uh, bears are different now. Reduce stagger reaction from all swipe attacks. Reduce damage from all the slam and the swipe. Uh, which is funny, because I don't know if you knew this online. Bears were totally OP if you played online. Like, damn, bears were OP as hell. Um, anyway, like, even when, like, oh, we go to Merc Guard and farm things, and it wasn't, it wasn't the giant bosses we were scared of. We were scared of the bear boss. That was the only boss that was dangerous. He's so dangerous. It was hilarious. Man, it was because he hit so hard. and Oh, it was crazy. All right, AI changes, I don't really care. Uh, so add an equip load driven delay before a target can start running after being hit with a melee attack. Is this for PVE or PVP is the question, but that's an interesting thing. So the heavy equip load delay uh, makes it so, yeah. So this adds more to having heavy then at the cost of the other cost of it. Normally light, I don't know. It was either light or heavy before. I don't know if medium's still in a weird spot maybe. Uh, and reduce the recovery of the block break reaction from 50 frames to 30 frames to make block breaks less penalizing. Okay. And then just weapon updates. So they, this is just a big ass patch is basically what I'm getting at here. I'm just trying to see if there's anything really worth looking at here in detail. Uh, change perks. Uh, change things with PvP. Mainly looks like a lot of fixed and issue things going on. And then progression, end game. We want okay. I'll read their top level right here, real quick. We wanted to give new level 60 players more guidance on how to engage with end game systems like expertise, gypsum, etc. There is now a new banner upon hitting level 60 that links to a new section in the journal to explain these systems in detail, as well as some reminder pop-ups on the next three logins. Okay. Um, if you had an issue with that, that might help you. Territory ownership. Um, oh, this was the big change, guys. Remember how. If you owned <laughs> Weaver's Fen, Weaver's Fen and Restless Shore, those were the two. If you own them, they didn't even pay for themselves. Nobody went there. There's no money to be made. So what they did is, let's see it. They updated the revenue structure for territory ownership. All revenue earned in a world is now pooled and a percentage is distributed to each governing company. The percentage amount is based on the territory and its town level, ranging from 5% to 12.5%. How does that affect taxes? Oh, oh, okay, we'll see. Okay. Updated territory upkeep cost to scale linearly with the town level. Territory upkeep cost scale linearly with the town. Okay. Uh, and the maximum upkeep cost at a town level 39 is now dependent on the territory's revenue split percentage. This change addresses the breakpoints that incentivize territory owners to not update the town level. I kind of kind of missed that, though. That was a cool mechanic, honestly. I remember we owned Weavers for like five months straight 
and it was like I were telling the guy in charge of our company I was like look do not go above this certain level because this town is not worth it so we're not gonna whenever we get an invasion and lose it and things like that would eventually RG will lose these things get them down to level two get these things up to level five and this town's gonna be an arcane town or whatever that was kind of cool but hey you know change is change is not a big deal uh, locked all tax rates for territories housing tax is one percent crafting it's at times 0 0.5 or finding 0 0.5 and trade tax is 2.5 percent okay so no more tyrannical rulers you know it's funny I like this change because they had an idea and it was a fun idea but it just turned into griefing at all times like it just always turned into griefing so the idea was um, oh, there'll be a ruthless tyrant and then other people will band together to dethrone them and take the territory But it turns out taking a territory is just not that easy and also you get scenarios where people <laughs> Never in my life has there been more politics in a video game than new world. I don't mean real-world politics I mean game politics internal to the game politics. It was hilarious so you'd have scenarios where like the best company and the best players all working together and paying each other money to make sure that no, like no one else can compete and they rise above and they have all the best gears so and no one else can dethrone them and they're just generally better at pvp and they're all sticking together so the main territories are owned by them so then they can just set the tax rate to like a billion people will still go to those territories because of their central location and it just turned into this griefing disaster on so many servers um so it's for the best that they did it this way and let the war be a little bit more sandboxy. It's not as relevant what territory you own and who's winning things. Uh, it's just something that's fun to do. That's probably better. It's just not realistic. What they envisioned is really cool on paper. It just wasn't realistic when you put actual real human beings behind the controls. Like we're, we're always going to just grief and do crazy stuff in video games. That's just how it's going to be. Um, so... More stuff here. I'm not really going to go too much in here. Maybe I'm missing something spectacular. But I don't really care. I just want to, you know, summarize the, the biggest, biggest things in here. Um, yeah, trade skills. Rune glass gems? Players can now combine ancient glyph stones found in secret locations with charged sand they refine from sandstone to craft powerful rune glass gems. These resources can only be found in brimstone sands. Rune glass gems combine the effects of any gem with an additional power depending on which ancient glyphs are used to craft them. Players can slot their rune glass gem into any armor or weapon gem slot. So it's a way to further upgrade the gems we put in our gear is what I'm reading, but I, I don't know if that's correct or not. Uh, new crafting item, the Golden Scarab. This item, when used in special crafting recipes, will give the crafter the ability to pick two crafting perks for their craft. Okay. There, these recipes will also require three time of shards and 25 crafting mods. Thank God, another way to throw away crafting mods. That's, I'm, I'm right. Just one second tangent on launch the crafting mods there weren't enough ways to get rid of them and it ended up where there was such a high surplus they were basically like one penny on the a lot of them were like one penny on the trading post and people just had like thousands of them sitting around it was so funny new consumable recipes so this is just like brimstone sands we've added some cool stuff um gathering we added young cacti mature cacti and ironwood is now 150 instead of 175, which is a miracle. That's so important if you guys knew the, the logging grind and the king points on it. Um, mining, lodestone comes down, ore, calcum ore comes down. Good. All the main things are down to 150 instead of 175. Um, and then, what is this? We compress the level buckets for skinning trades go from 16 down to 4. It, okay, so now you don't have like the... Oh, you're you can't get skin this till 30 level 35. You can't skin this till level 55. Like you don't have those like crazy small increments. It's just four now, which is whatever. I, I never felt like that one was a big deal, honestly. But it is what it is. Add any recipes for refining. All known by default to refining material conversion. Okay, uh, giving players an additional avenue to create a limited number of rare resources per day. Fishing. Uh, let's see. I I gotta go through. So, did they ever save fishing, or is fishing still trash? Uh, fishing now remembers you last select the glass of bait fixed issue fixed an issue nobody cares Legendary fish now count towards fishing quest progression Fixed an issue with player movement while holding a fishing pole. Oh, did they get rid of the cheat those? Oh, they nerfed fishing you used to be able to do this thing where you could like, you know Wind up the fishing rod and then cast it and if, I forget how you did it But you could you could get in the animation of casting while still moving 
And so then you would just be like sliding or your legs aren't moving and you're just casting your rod and just kind of swiveling around. Oh, it was so much fun. It was like the, it was like the, um, no one ever knew about this and very few people did it, but it was like the advanced form of teabagging in New World. You very rarely saw it, but if you did it to someone, oh, it was, it was amazing. It was so griefy. I just loved it. it oh, I'll miss that. Uh, back and check to prevent players from activating fishing while actively in combat. Erroneous requires fishing tool messages. So, fishing's still a garbage trade skill that nobody ever wants. It's the only trade skill I don't have at 200, and it'll probably be that way forever because I just don't have time to sit there for 30 hours just fishing. Like, not gonna happen. Um, and then the musical instruments fix a bunch of crap with that, maybe. And I don't see anything crazy. Group finder. Uh, I didn't even know they added a group finder. So I guess there's a group finder now. I'm assuming it's it's not cross server. I think someone told me about it. It's not cross server. So uh, fixed issues, fixed issues, fixed issues, fixed issues, and quality of life improvements. I'm not even gonna read them all. And audio, random crap. So just want to go through that with you. That took way longer than I thought. I just want to say right now, um, that's a lot of stuff in this update. That is actually a lot of stuff. I can see why people are curious and coming back. They did a lot in this one single update. Also, they're going to have fresh start servers in, what, like the first week of November? If you want to try New World from the start with everyone, which it, it could be fun. Uh, I think that was the most fun experience ever on an MMO for me personally was New World when we all came in. We were all like in that rush. I came in, I immediately wanted to make money and, and be successful. I was like making iron tools and selling them for a fortune. And then I moved from this to that. And, and while leveling, it was like a race. It was really, really fun. So it could be fun again, but we've already done it before. So maybe it won't be, we'll, we'll have to see. So yeah, that's the news with New World. That's what's going on guys. So I would just run through the brimstone, stone, brimstone sands and show you in this video some stuff, but um, it's gonna be like another 40 minutes before I even get in. I'll just do it in a whole nother video, okay? So make sure you're subscribed and turn the bell icon back on since I haven't posted New World videos in like six months. I don't blame you for not following in that way anymore. But uh, at least in the short term, I'm going to be checking this out. I'm going to try to, you know, I'm always trying to do a better job bouncing between games instead of getting just stuck on one. But that's easier said than done. I'm so bad about like, now I'm playing this game. Now I'm playing whatever. Like now I'm playing Stray for a week. Like it's hard. But right now, I'm going to be probably doing Overwatch 2 videos and New World videos for at least a few weeks. And I'm going to see what's going on, you know, get back into it. So be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more. But yeah, so this is New World. I, is it saved? I don't know, but is New World dying? I, I guess it's not dying anymore, guys. I guess it's trending up. I'm sure because of Brimstone Sands, we're going to see it go up and then come down. But is it going to crash and burn down? Like, I don't know. They fixed a lot of core issues that made the game suck. Uh, so, you know, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Like, I don't know. I just don't know. I mean, there's still obviously some weird issues with the game. Like, the gear progression is kind of derpy feeling. And, eh, but we'll see. Is New World saved? You tell me. Let me know in the comments below. What do you think? Is it saved? Is it dying? I don't know. It's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know what the hell they're going to do about the servers. Because if it's ever not dying... I already talked about it, so, you know, what the hell's gonna happen next? Alright, but anyway, that's the situation with New Worlds. I wanted to keep you guys updated, give you the news on that. I'm gonna be checking it out in the next few days, and, uh, yeah, if you want to check out New World again and give it another shot, I think now, either now's your time, or you wait another year until some other major update. But, yeah, that's, that's the situation. That's what's going on with New World today.